morphine. And those are part of, of language that have to be stored in your long-term memory, right? You can't just like figure out in a language how, what the word, the morphine that means dog is, right? You just have to memorize that. So we've got morphemes, and they've got three parts to them, we said. Did we say that already? Yeah. yeah. So a morpheme, we can call it a, you know, if we want to talk fancy, we can say morphemes are, have a tripartite structure. That makes it sound like you're being scientific. Okay, instead of saying it has three parts, you say it's got a tripartite structure. So what's one part? Phonology. Yeah, it's got some phonology, like, you know, my pronunciation, or let's say pronunciation is, you know, I'm just making up the language. What's another part? Semantics. It's got some semantics, which is like, you know, I mean uh, modem or whatever. Often we write like kind of concepts in, uh, in capital, all capital letters. Right? So the concept modem is expressed by the phonological string Luga Miku and it's got some syntax that says things like I'm a noun or something like that. Like, I'm a count noun, I can take a plural suffix, something like that. Okay, so we really only care about this part, but we need to uh, 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 mention these others because when we refer to morphemes we don't want to list all this all the time so we'll often say things like you know the morpheme uh, uh, toto in Swahili right and so we just use the phonological part to refer to the morpheme but the morpheme is really the phonology and the semantics and the syntax right? and that's important because you can have homophonous <coughs> right? you can have different morphemes that have the same pronunciation, right? So in English, you can have uh, uh, the, uh, the, the plural morpheme, like that you get in like cats, and you can get the morpheme that you get in like John walks the dog every morning, right? The verbal ending morpheme, and you can get uh, uh, Jack's book, the possessive morpheme, and I don't know, is there another one? And the contracted form of the verb to be, right? Jackson. Uh, so there's four different morphemes here. So if I just said the morpheme s, that's kind of a bad way to do things. It's the, the, it means four different things, right? But if I if I add in, you know, I mean possessive, and I attach to nouns, uh, or I mean uh, plural, and I attach to nouns or I mean uh, is, you know, or to be, or whatever, and I attach, I, I basically am a verb by myself. And what's the last one? Present tense marker. I mean third person, singular, and I attach to verb, right? Like John walks the dog. So we got morphemes, and we got a bunch of them, and so we, we, we have a list or a collection of morphemes in our mental grammar, and so what do we call that collection? The lexicon. What can we do with these morphemes? You know, if you see things like, you know, this, actually, and this, and this. All right, so it says, this says, let, let's take this one. It says, I mean plural, and I attach to nouns. So we've got roots, and we've got things that attach to them, so we need some, but we need some method of it, we need some some component that that attaches things to each other, right? So we just need what? Well, so we need yeah, we need some way of encoding prefixes and suffixes. But then, just more generally, I'm just asking a more general question. We need morphology, right? We need or compositionality, compositionality, which just means so morphology. More, what does morph mean? The form, right? So morphology is the study of word forms, or the morphological part of the grammar is responsible for the form of words by putting its pieces together. And compositionality is a more general word, but what it means is just that we that words are composed of pieces. More. Okay. So if you just have a bunch of, if you have a lexicon that has, you know, uh, uh, I'm just going to write in regular writing, cat and rat and mat and plural, let's say. But just like that, you're not going to get words. You need some system that we don't have to worry about because we're in phonology class. 
some system that says, oh, I can take cat and then combine it with plural and get it word cats. Right? So, I mean, we're, we're say, stating the obvious. You need some way to combine them. That's morphology. Okay? And we also talked about the possibility, because we looked at things like Southern Barasana, where you had something like ka, he, a, and I, and ka, he, and I's. It has a plural morphine, right? So something that means plural, and it attaches to nouns. And what's its phonology? How do you pronounce the plural morpheme in Southern Barasana? Remember, you worked through this. Okay, how do you pronounce the singular morpheme? Ah, the morpheme, just the singular part, is ah. Right? I know there were other words I forget, like bitia or something like that. Right? Ah, ah, ah was always singular. And then the plural of this was something like biti. That's it. So, how do you, what's the sound of the plural? Yeah, it doesn't have any sound, right? It doesn't have any sound, but it's possible that there's still a morpheme because it could have a meaning. I mean plural. I attach to nouns. It could have a syntax, but it might have no phonology. Okay? So in this book, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use this symbol here. We actually decided to use two separate versions of this. So the empty set symbol, you know, from set theory. We made kind of like a more squat, fatter one, a rounder one, for the empty, the, the, the a morpheme with no phonology. We're going to say, sometimes there might be a morpheme that's present, but it doesn't seem to have any phonology. Okay. There's going to be all kinds of reasons why you might think such things exist, like, I don't know, take, uh, I don't know, let's say sheep, right? Is there, what's you say, one sheep? One sheep is in the field. Do I have lamb for lunch this morning? I'm feeling guilty. Uh, and I can say two sheep uh, are in the field. Well, when you start doing syntax, you might develop a theory that says a subject and a, and a verb have to agree a number. And then you get all screwed up with words like sheep. So it might be you might be forced by your syntactic theory to say, actually, there's a plural morpheme here, even though we don't hear it. Right? So it might be that there's morphemes in language that have no pronunciation. There seem to be morphemes that have no meaning. Like if you take, uh, I don't know, the difference between, uh, I don't know, let's use Spanish because it's easier. Uh, so give me two Spanish verbs. One that's, uh, I don't know, like, let's say something like, I don't know, to drink, right? Is that to drink in Spanish? Okay, and give me one that has an AR. What? Did you say hablar? Whatever, okay? So you've got your root that means drink and your root that means talk, and something here means uh, <coughs> infinitive verb form, right? To, to talk or to drink. But there's no real difference, there's no meaning difference between this. Right? It seems to just be a thing that says, I'm a, I don't know what you call this, first conjugation, and I'm, or first and second conjugation, whatever you call them. They just mark different categories. Right? It's like a morpheme with no meaning. It just says, I attach to some nouns, some verbs, I attach to other verbs, uh, but it doesn't have any, any actual meaning. So you could have morphemes with no semantics, you could have morphemes with no phonology. There might even be morphemes with no syntax. Anybody think of one? The syntax says, like, where do I go in a sentence, or what do I combine with? I was thinking of something like, hello, right? When you say, hello, right? It's kind of like, you can't combine it in a sentence. It's not the subject. It's not an adverb. It just stands on its own. It seems to be outside of the sentence. So maybe hello is a morphine that, you know, has some phonology. And what? No, that's, that's phonetics. That's oh, phonetic transcription. And it has uh, some semantics. It means, you know, hello. And it doesn't have any syntax. You know, I don't know, whatever. I mean, I don't know, it's possible. The point is we can play this game 
once we have the tripartite structure. Uh, sorry, we got morphemes, and they're collected in the lexicon, and we need some kind of system for combining them, but none of that system is our problem for now. Right? We're just going to assume that we can figure out where the suffixes and the prefixes and the infixes go, but that's all morphology.